Hi, my name is Nick Yi. I'm the co-founder and analytics lead of Quantic Foundry. Just one quick note before I dive into a demo of the dashboard. For those of you who are new to our gamer motivation model, here's a link to a quick overview chart of the 12 motivations that we have in our model and how they're grouped together. If you'd like to get a better sense of the data that we've collected and how we use that data to create the model, uh, here's a link to a talk that we presented at the Game Developers Conference and the Games UR Summit earlier this year. So let's dive now into the dashboard itself. The Game Audience Dashboard is actually hooked into a live version of the backend database. So as new players come through and they take the Gamer Motivation Profile, their data is immediately added to the database and also immediately used to generate the findings in this dashboard. Um, in our data set are 245,000 unique gamers, um, and our game catalog has right around 1,300 game titles. Let me step through the main functionalities in our dashboard, starting with the titles catalog. So the titles catalog provides um, a basic look at view of all the game titles that are in our database. So what we have here is a list of all the game titles in our game catalog sorted by the sample size. So this is the number of gamers in our surveys who've mentioned this game as a game they like or enjoy. I can also do searches. So if I type in CIV into the search bar, I get back a list of all games that have that substring, again, sorted by the sample size. So there's one thing I want to point out about these numbers. In the survey, we actually allow gamers to type in a game by both the, the franchise level, so they'll say Civilization, the series, for example, or they can type in just one game title in the franchise, like Civ V. Um, one thing we've found is that players rarely mention multiple titles within the same franchise. They'll either say the franchise as a whole or they'll just mention one game in that franchise. So these numbers here are essentially mutually exclusive numbers. Um, the 1007, there's essentially no overlap with people who put down some of the series. So this gives a sense of the proportion of people who mention you know, different titles within a franchise, but it also gives you a sense of if you want to combine um, different titles in the, the findings generation later on, you know what the sample sizes are in each of those buckets. So let's hop on over now to the audience profile. So this is a second panel. And this panel essentially provides all the information that we currently provide in our static PDF reports. So as I type, type typing in um, a game name, it'll show me all the games that match that substring. Let me start with Civilization, the series. So here it's providing the sample size as we saw before in the titles catalog. I'm gonna skip this first section of filters and come back to it later. So here in the first panel is the demographic profile. Uh, we get the median age along with the age range, uh, the gender distribution, the gamer category, so the self report as casual, core, or hardcore gamer. And then finally, the number of days they typically play per week where they play at least uh, 30 minutes each day. So is it zero to one days, two to three days, up to you know six to seven days. Under each box is a line of gray text. So here, you know, significantly older than average, slightly lower proportion of female gamers. So these are dynamically generated um, by a comparison with the full baseline sample data. So with the roughly 250,000 gamers, how do these numbers compare with that baseline average? Just so you get a sense of you know, what these numbers mean in the bigger context. Here in the second panel is the motivation profile. So the percentile rankings of this audience on each of the 12 motivations. On the bottom, again, are two lines of helper text that pick out the top and bottom motivations and provide you know, some brief uh, definitions, just so you don't have to do the lookup, um, and gives you a sense of what those motivations mean. There's a quick export button here. So if you'd like to download this chart for a, a PowerPoint slide, there's an easy way to do so. 
And then finally we get to this uh, list on the bottom. This is a list of the games that are disproportionately popular among this audience, sorted by a QF score, the, the Quantic Foundry score. So what the QF score does is take into account um, the confound of general popularity. So there are certain games that are popular across gamers. Um, so Skyrim, Minecraft, um, a lot of people just will mention these games as popular games. And so to avoid these generally popular games drowning out the more interesting and relevant games, we divide it by the baseline popularity. So you know a score of two means that this game is twice as popular in this audience than in the full baseline sample. So in a sense, this is a corrected popularity score. And this list ranks you know, the games um, by that corrected popularity score. And we can scroll through you know, to the page after and so forth. OK, so I'm going to go back to the top of the page and go over the audience filters that I skipped before. So what these filters do is they essentially let you uh, subsample the, the full audience for this game. So let's say I only care about younger gamers who like the Civ series um, and I only care about the men. Um, so this dynamically um, subsamples that audience um, and creates, you know, again, the same information, the audience demographics, the motivation profiles, the list of popular games for that subset of the audience. So, you know, again, one thing you have to be careful about is not to select so many things um, that come up with too small of a sample. Um, and, you know, let me just reset back to both men and women now. And then the one final thing I want to show you up here um, is I can actually add more than one game at a time. So before I started with Civ the series, but I can also add in Civ 5. I'm going to add in Civ 4. Um, and again, I've kept that age range filter. So this is you know the number of people who play the full Civ series, Civ, who like Civ 5, Civ 4. Between the ages of 15 to 30, this is the new sample size in the audience. Um, and again, it's generated the, the new profile information for this sample. OK, so let's hop over now to the last panel, the competition map. So what the competition map does is it lets you visually explore the relationship between different game titles. Um, let me just hop right in. I'm going to check both these helper functions and then tell you what they do along the way. I'm going to type in civilization like I've done throughout this demo. So what's happened is we've grabbed civilization and the 10 games that are most disproportionately popular as we saw in the audience profile before. So it automatically grabbed the games that are most highly related to civilization, um, plotted them out along the axes of challenge and community, the defaults, um, and then cropped the graph uh, so that we don't have a lot of empty space on the edges. And of course, we can dynamically change what the axes are. So let me do, for example, strategy by uh, competition. So here's what that map looks like updated. And then if I wanted to add other games, let's say I want to add StarCraft. Uh, I'll pick the series to the mix. So again, it's added StarCraft in you know, the series and as well, you know, the 10 games that are most related to StarCraft and put them on the same map. You know, so again, just a really easy way to explore, you know, the motivation neighborhood around a specific game title. That's pretty much it for, you know, the game audience dashboard. If you have any questions, you know, for us or would like to learn more, you can contact us at team at quanticfoundry.com. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and again, give us a ping if you have any questions.